What is speedrunning? Speedrunning is completing a game as fast as possible. To some people, it's a new form of competition. Others, a practice of self-betterment. This could take the form of collecting 120 stars in Mario 64, or ripping out the spines of demons in Doom. For me, it's a practice in patience. A new way to enjoy the games that I've loved since I was a child. And as I hone these games down to a fine art, I also get to relive the nostalgia that made me fall in love with them in the first place. Speedrunners are often called the rare breed. Maybe it's our incredible patience, or what some might call masochism, but I believe that anyone can enjoy speedrunning. People often say to me that they would love to speedrun, but they never see anyone running the games that they like. They don't even know if it's possible to speedrun those games. It's not common knowledge, but really any game can be speedrun. All you need is some rules and a goal. From Simpsons Hit and Run to Titanfall 2, and everything in between, speedrunning as a concept as old as games are. Since the dawn of the computer, people have been making games, and other people have dedicated their lives to beating them fast. The original Doom is often credited as being the first ever speed game. It was definitely one of the first to host a leaderboard and have a competitive scene. But speedrunning has grown a long way since then. Now you can see charity marathon events raising millions of dollars, and Twitch streamers doing speedruns for thousands of people every day. Hell, it's even my job to speedrun. Speedrunning being my passion and focus makes me want to share this experience with everyone that I can. Participating in events like Games Done Quick and Twitch Rivals have really broadened my realization of how little people actually know about speedrunning, and how even fewer have actually tried it. I honestly think that speedrunning is one of the most accessible hobbies out there. All you need is a game and a timer. If you would like to get into speedrunning but don't know where to start, then I have something for you. I asked some of my friends in the community to help me come up with the ultimate guide for how to get into speedrunning. No matter why you want to get into it, this guide will help you reach your goals. Click the playlist to see all of the videos in this series, and learn step by step to speedrun any game, from picking a game to recording, and even proper strategies for practicing. Anything you could need to get into one of the best hobbies on the internet. Step 1. Picking a game. Every speedrunner needs a game. It's their yin to their yang. But how are you supposed to choose? There are so many games out there you could possibly run. How are you supposed to pick only one? It is vital when picking a game to speedrun that you choose something that you love to play. Series you are nostalgic for, or just enamored with or preferred. At the end of the day, you will be spending more time in this game than you potentially have ever spent in a game before. So it's important that you choose something that you'll enjoy. Any game can be speedrun. All you need is a starting position and a goal. So cast aside any preconceived notions about what is possible to speedrun. Make a list of your favorite games. Ones that you think you wouldn't mind playing at least a couple more times. Now think about why you like these games. Do you enjoy them for their narrative? Maybe they have a lot of replayability. Any reason that you may love these games, I suggest you write it down. Now that you have your list of games, you need to learn more about each game's individual speedruns. The way a game is played casually and as a speedrun can vary wildly. Sometimes a game can be barely recognizable during a run because the way it is played is just so different than the original intent. Some may be long and some may be very short. Maybe you glitch past everything and maybe there is no glitches at all. There are many different types of speedruns and not all of them are for everyone. In order to learn more about a game's speedrun, you must check out their community. Speedrunning communities need a place to organize their information and to compare times. These places are usually leaderboards and forums. Most notably, speedrun.com is the largest platform for leaderboards and speedrunning. Most any game you can think of is on speedrun.com, except for a few notable exceptions. For example, the Soul series, GoldenEye Perfect Dark, Zelda, Mario Kart 64, and the Halo series all have their own websites. Speedrun.com is currently hosting over 1 million speedruns, and 17,000 games ran by 271,000 users. The homepage hosts the official speedrun Twitch stream. This stream plays world record recordings from random games on speedrun.com. It can be a good way to watch a new run that you might have had no interest in before. Below that, there is the latest uploaded runs on the website. These games are usually some of the most active games on the website, but it also is curated for your tastes if you have an account. Before we get too deep into speedrun.com, it might be useful to understand the lingo of speedrunner culture. There is a lot of speedrunning lingo, but I'll attempt to cover the most important phrases and words that you need to understand in order to get the most out of a site like speedrun.com. 
Most all speedrunning lingo comes from the leaderboard. In order to understand speedrunning lingo, it is important to know what the purpose of a leaderboard is. Leaderboards are a tool used for structuring the rules and requirements for a speedrun. In order for people to compete directly with each other, they must all be playing with the same goal in mind and with the same rules. This is where categories come into play. Basically, a category is a set of rules and a specific goal for a speedrun. Games can have multiple categories, and each category has their own leaderboard. Every game is going to have categories specific to that game. However, there is some large overlap with a few key terms. Any percent. Beating the game as fast as possible with no other requirements, hence any percent of the game completed. 100%. Completing the game with 100% completion. Glitchless. Beating the game without using any glitches. New game. Beating the game on a new file without using anything from previous play. New game plus. Beating the game while using power-ups or items gained from previous play. These are the most basic categories that you'll find across the speedrunning world. They are often used as shorthand for names of other slightly more complex categories. For example, you might call 120 star in Mario 64 100%. People will know what you're talking about, but it won't fully describe exactly what's happening in the category. Now, for a speedrun to be placed on a leaderboard, it must be timed correctly. Many games use different timing methods. In fact, it's pretty rare that a game uses a regular timer, like a stopwatch, when recording runs. You can find what timing method is used in the View Rules box above the leaderboard. Here is a basic rundown of the main timing methods you will see and how they work. RTA, or Real Time Attack. This is just a normal real time, like a stopwatch. LRT, or Load Remover Timer. Also known as RTA without loads, this is a timer that detects when your game is loading information during loading screens and removes that section from the overall time. This is because, especially on PC games, a player's hardware can drastically affect how long these loads are. In an attempt to remove any sort of pay to win, these loading screens are not counted, making it an even playing field for those with less powerful PCs. IGT, or In Game Timer. This is the game's in-game timer. Its rules are totally specific to whatever game is being played, and not every game has an in-game timer. Next we have some miscellaneous terms that you might hear floating around. RNG, or Random Number Generation. Games generate random numbers to represent more complex actions in a game. So, as shorthand, anything that is random in a game, like the solution to a puzzle, or where an enemy might spawn, is referred to as RNG. WR, or World Record, the fastest recorded time for a game or category. PB, or Personal Best, the fastest time for a game or category in regards to the person being talked about. For example, my PB in Left 4 Dead 2 is 1 hour and 1 second. Reset, starting over from the beginning. We will cover this in its own topic later. IL, or Individual Level. Running just a portion of the game, rather than the whole thing. Emulation. Playing on software made to recreate hardware. For example, you might emulate a Super Nintendo game instead of playing it on the original hardware. Optimized. How close a game is to being as fast as it could possibly be. For example, it is only possible for a human to save about one second on the world record of Super Mario Bros. This game is much more optimized than Luigi's Mansion 3, which still has several minutes that can be shaved off of the world record. Now that we have some understanding of basic speedrunning lingo, we can go over the specifics on speedrun.com and show you where you need to go to find all of the information you'll need to learn more about the game you have written down. Firstly, you have the Games tab. This tab shows you some games that are listed on speedrun.com in order of most active. These games at the top of the list are going to be the biggest communities. This may be a good or a bad thing depending on what you want. Games with large communities are more likely to have better resources for learning, but are also much more populated and optimized, so it may be very difficult to get a good time in these games, and breaking into the community can also be hard, depending on the attitude of said community. There is also some sorting options if you want to find a game via some other metric. You can also directly search for the game you're looking for with the search bar above.
The next tab is the Streams tab. This area is dedicated to speedrunners who are streaming live. This might be a great place to start if you see someone streaming one of the games you're interested in, or are just looking for new runners to follow in general. Next is the Forums tab. This is the general forums for the entirety of speedrun.com. You can find threads on speedrunning basics, recording, and streaming tips, even tournaments and races. Lastly, we have the More tab. This is a dropdown that expands to show the rest of the options on the site. The most important one here is Resources. This is a list of resources for anything from timing methods to recording and streaming software. Researching and selecting your game. Now with our understanding of speedrun.com, we should go check out a few runs for the games we wrote down on our list. For this tutorial, I will use Left 4 Dead 2 as my example. Once we arrive at the page we want, there are a few things that you should take note of. Firstly, the length of the run. Here the world record is 49 minutes, so rather short. However, it is important to look at the times of all the runs on the board to see what the average time would be. It is important not to be intimidated by this time. You may think you can never do it that fast, but I assure you, there is a ton of man hours that go into getting these world record times. Your run never has to be as good as this, and as long as you're striving to improve it, it'll be an enjoyable experience. Personally, I would suggest a run somewhere between 3 hours and 30 minutes. Runs longer than 3 hours may be hard to finish because you might lose interest or not be able to focus for that long. Runs shorter than 30 minutes are generally easier to learn, but once you learn them, they can get old really fast and become optimized very quickly. As well as, it's important to note, just because a run is short does not mean it's easier, and just because a run is long does not mean it's harder. However, this is just my suggestion. If you feel like you want to do something outside of that, then go for it. The most important factor here is your own enjoyment. Before you dismiss a run for its length, you should at least check the rules and the categories first. The category that is automatically open when you go to the game's page is referred to as the main category, and is often the most active category. Just because the category is the main category does not mean it is the best one to run. That is entirely subjective, so I suggest checking out all the categories for the games that you're interested in. You might be surprised. In this case, the main category is Main Campaign Solo Any Difficulty. If we go check the rules, that means you have to complete all the campaigns the game launched with in one go. Dead Center, Dark Carnival, Swamp Fever, Hard Rain, and The Parish. It also states to check a forum post about the rules that apply for every category. If we check this, we can see the rules for timing as well as what is and is not allowed. Common things you'll see here is the use of mods is banned. Same thing with cheats. Every game is going to be different, and this game in particular's rules are very specific. Once you have a simple understanding of the rules and an estimate for how long the run will be, you should watch a few runs. It is obvious that you would want to watch the world record run to see what peak performance looks like, but I also strongly suggest that you watch a few runs near the middle of the leaderboard so you can see what a more obtainable run looks like. Speed games sometimes are very different at high versus low level. It is important to understand that in case there is a big learning curve. For example, your first run of Super Mario 64 will probably not use the same strats or look anything like the world record. Another way to watch runs would be to watch a marathon run of the game. For instance, games done quick or European speedrunning assembly runs. These are runs done in front of an audience for the purpose of entertaining and informing. It is likely that these runs will be more fun to watch, as well as more informative, as the point of the commentary is to inform what is actually going on in the game. You might learn how a few things in the game are done, and how hard the run is in general. Once you have watched a run or two, it should be pretty easy to decide if this game is for you. I suggest you do this process for all the games on your list. You might not find anything that piques your interest, but you may also find more than one game does. It is also important in my opinion to pick two games from your list to pursue. Running just one game will get you really good at that game fast, but it only teaches you to be good at that game, and not speedrunning in general. Every game has its own challenges, and if you only speedrun one game, it may be easy to get burnt out, and it may become no longer fun. If you pick up two games, then you might have some room to compare and contrast, as well as swap back and forth if you are getting tired of one or the other. Do not learn them at the same time though. Pick one, learn it to completion, do a few runs, and then learn the other. Trying to learn two games at the same time will become very confusing and you will become frustrated quickly. Now we have picked our game and understand how to navigate speedrun.com. In the next video, 
I will explain the most important parts in learning how to speedrun your game, as well as a few strategies for learning that will help you in getting good at your game fast. Click the video on screen to go to the next video in this playlist, where we'll cover strategies for learning the game, as well as how to practice.